Hello everyone, I am Dr. Srikanth, Assistant Professor in Cardiac Anesthesia in uh, UN Mehta Institute of Cardiology and Research Center. Today we are going to discuss about uh, anesthesia management of uh, coarctation of aorta in both adult and uh, pediatric patients. Uh, coarctation of aorta is uh, considered aortic segment that comprises localized medial thickening with some infolding of medial and superimposed neo-intimal tissue. It accounts for 5% uh, of all uh, congenital cardiac defects and mortality is greater than 80% if unrepaired. It is more common in boys. 75% of children with coarctation of aorta have uh, another cardiac anomaly, most commonly PDE, bicus priotic valve, VSD and uh, mitral valve anomalies. Coarctation of aorta may also be associated with 22Q11 uh, deletion that in, uh, includes a thymic uh, aplasia, cleft palate, hypocalcemia, mild developmental delay and hyperplastic left heart syndrome. Associated syndromes are uh, Turner syndrome, Kabuki syndrome and uh, Schoen syndrome. In Turner syndrome, coarctation of aorta is seen in up to 15% of patients. Uh, this is a chromosome abnormality of 45X0 associated with the difficult airway features. Kabuki syndrome, uh, this is a generally abnormality associated with the developmental delay, joint laxity. It is associated with hypoplastic uh, isthmus and uh, juxtaductal coarctation of aorta in 25% of patients. Also, anomalous origin of coronary from the PA. Schoen syndrome is a series of four abnormalities, supravalvular mitral membrane, parachute mitral valve, subiotic stenosis and coarctation of aorta. Uh, this is a rare and associated with poor prognosis due to combination of uh, both inflow and outflow obstruction of left ventricle. Natural history, unrepaired uh, patients, mortality from coarctation appro uh, approaches up to 80% by the age of 55%. Most common cause of death in, uh, is cardiac failure, uh, uh, that is 25%, following aortic rupture for 21%, endocarditis for 18%, intracranial hemorrhage 12%. 10% of these coarctation of aorta have uh, intracranial aneurysm within the circular phyllis. If repaired before the age of 14 years, the 20 year survival rate is 91%. If repaired after the age of 14 years, 20 year survival is uh, 79%. During pregnancy with coarctation of aorta, there is a risk of aortic dissection or intracranial hemorrhage. Clinical presentation. Uh, presentation of coarctation of aorta varies uh, according to severity of coarctation, presence of uh, associated defects, extent, uh, extent of PDA patency and uh, presence of collaterals. Presentation clinically, early presentation and late presentation. In early presentation, coarctation of aorta usually presents in units with signs of cardiogenic shock uh, postnatally or after duct closes depending on severity and whether there is also cardiac anomalies. Young children, they may present with certain symptoms of left ventricle dysfunction such as uh, poor feeding, tachypnea, lethargy, failure to thrive, poor exercise tolerance or uh, incidental finding of uh, upper limb hypertension. In a late presentation, this is usually asymptomatic and there is an incidental finding of upper limb hypertension or murmur associated with bicuspidiatic valve or collateral formation. More subtle symptoms may include headache, fatigue, intermittent claudication. Occasionally, this may present as a complication of untreated coarctation of aorta, such as aortic rupture, intracranial hemorrhage, LV failure, or features of endocarditis. Site of coarctation most common site distal to the origin of left supply of artery. Uh, if proximal to PDA or a ligament of ductus, it is known as infantile type. If distal to the ductus, it is known as uh, adult type. Most of uh, preductal occurs in infants and they do occur in adults and uh, vice versa. So this is the, these are the images of uh, preductal and uh, postductal. Classification based on size of lumen and collateral circulation. Wide lumen with good collaterals and uh, wide lumen with poor collaterals, so narrow lumen with good collaterals and narrow lumen with poor collaterals. So there are 80% of cases in first group and uh, latter group is the rare. So there are the, uh, here, this is the image showing different types of uh, collaterals. Uh, here you can see the uh, site of coarctation and the various collaterals. Uh, here internal mammary artery, uh, axillary artery and intercostal artery, various collaterals. Collateral flow originates from the supply of artery and supplies the descending and aorta primarily via intercostal, inferior epigastric and the sub subscapular arteries. Adequacy of collateral circulation can be uh, assessed by clinically or by listening breathing. Uh, feel the pulsation in the back and the femoral arteries. Rib notching as seen in chest x-ray usually becomes apparent 
are at seven years of age uh, and it is a definitive evidence of well developed collateral circulation the size of lumen can only be judged from the angiogram pressure criteria for diagnosis include a transiatic gradient more than 20 if gradient less than 20 it is uh, seen in if there are well developed collaterals or uh, there is a reduced cardiac output due to lv dysfunction surgical or uh, catheter based repair uh, choice of procedure for collateration of repair uh, depends on age of the patient, ventricular function and uh, extent of narrowing and uh, institutional practice or preferences. Uh, percutaneous catheter interventions. Uh, catheter based interventions with the balloon dilatation and uh, stent placement are procedure of choice for older children and adults with a discrete lactation. Uh, patients, uh, Patients who are not uh, adult size at the time of initial stent placement uh, then return for dilatation for their stent. Placement of adult size stent requires 6 French delivery system and the uh, patient should wait at least 20 to 25 kilo uh, to decrease the risk of vascular injury to the femoral artery. So these are the images of uh, percutaneous uh, dilatation of aorta uh, and uh, stent placement. Surgical repair. Surgical repair includes resection of a narrowed segment uh, with end to end or end to side anastomosis. Uh, surgical approach uh, is generally through the uh, in lateral position uh, with a thoracotomy uh, with the patient uh, uh, right lateral decubitus. Dissection and exposure can be difficult in older children and adults because of presence of collaterals. Uh, pre op evaluation uh, begins. It begins through a review of history, physical examination, their radio femoral delay typically we can see uh, and the current medications and for hypertension, presence of a difficult airway in a syndromic patients, ECG may demonstrate LV hypertrophy, chest x-ray findings include three sign, uh, rib notching in chest x-ray can be seen on uh, rib 3 to 9 older children and in adults fully formed collaterals, echo uh, cardiography for a site of uh, coactation or we can see coactation of aorta uh, in uh, angiogram and uh, if possible you can uh, measure the coactation and the pressure gradient in uh, suprasternal uh, view uh, and uh, check for uh, biventricular function uh, presence of associated cardiac lesions this is the three sign you can see in a chest x-ray and uh, this, these are the collaterals and uh, you can see rib notching due to collaterals and uh, the rib notching there are different causes uh, it can be normal or uh, due to neurofibromatosis usually seen on upper edge and uh, in case of uh, abnormally dilated vessels in a lower edge in case of hyperparathyroidism we can see randomly uh, superior and inferior edge margins anesthetic management of uh, coactation of iota so uh, catheter based in, uh, interventions the decision regarding general anesthesia versus sedation should take into consideration of patient age uh, clinical status comorbid conditions and uh, procedure specific factors in case of severe LV dysfunction uh, with the coactation of iota it is better to intubate the such patients inadequate anesthesia puts patient at risk of moving uh, during cardiac dilatation uh, which can result in a significant morbidity such as in misplacement of stent uh, stent migration and aortic dissection so to avoid all these uh, give good depth of anesthesia and uh, better to intubate such patients. Invasive BP monitoring, right lateral and femoral artery for uh, pre and post coactation pressure respectively. Uh, cardiologist uses rapid ventricular pacing with, uh, with a pacing catheter to reduce aortic pressure and uh, this will help in optimizing uh, placement of stent. So brief cessation of cardiac output during balloon dilatation stent placement and uh, rapid ventricular pacing are uh, typically well tolerated especially in patient with the preserved LV function. Patients with severe LV dysfunction, uh, these patients uh, while uh, by dilatation of balloon, patients may go into uh, VT, VF or sometimes uh, uh, LV rupture can be seen. Uh, monitors of uh, invasive BP, uh, CBP line, uh, if center, uh, usually should place. Uh, if central line not used, it is ideal to have a two large peripheral inter, uh, IV lines to manage complications like aortic dissection or in case of any there is a bleeding. Uh, cerebral NIRS uh, for early identification of cerebral hypoperfusion. Uh, induction for uh, surgical repair, uh, ketamine should be avoided uh, due to pre-existing hypertension but it is particularly useful in the unit with uh, duct dependent circulation. 
uh, right radial artery line should be used uh, with the addition of femoral arterial line to assess the gradient across the repair. Uh, so both these arteries between the radial and femoral artery, you can measure the gradient before the repair and after the repair. Uh, in case of a right aortic arch uh, with mirror imaging, take a arc line from the left radial artery. Monitoring, <coughs> spinal cord monitoring is used in older children <coughs> as a loss of uh, sensory, somatosensory and motor uh, potential signal is a sensitive indicator of potential spinal cord injury. Cerebral NIRS, early identification of cerebral hypoperfusion. Double limit tube uh, for intubation uh, should be considered for good, good surgical exposure. Uh, this is uh, usually done in adult patients. In uh, pediatric patients, usually in a uh, single lumen tube, uh, that uh, endobranchial intubation, uh, we, with that we can provide uh, one lung ventilation or you can use the bronchial blockers. Single limb endo endobranchial tubes provide adequate exposure in neonates and infants, whereas the lung isolation with a double limb tube uh, with a bronchial blocker considered in older children and adults to assist surgical exposure. Uh, bronchial blocker can be uh, usually placed in, uh, in a patient of almost any size. Uh, surgeons usually retract the lung uh, in uh, children which provides uh, surgical exposure without any significant drop in saturation. Uh, double lumen tubes can be placed in patients uh, uh, above the 12 years of age. After in, uh, intubation, of, intubation and placement of lines, patient is positioned in a right lateral decubiter position uh, with the pressure points protected. IIT cross clamping. A cross clamping is applied above and below the coactation site to perform repair. Application of attic clamp uh, further increases the myocardial afterload. Uh, in the setting of preserved LV function, uh, application of cross clamping will typically produce an increase in proximal blood pressure and a con uh, concomitant decrease in distal blood pressure. Uh, many have recommended that uh, proximal blood pressure should be allowed to increase in order to improve the distal perfusion because the uh, blood flow to the lower body and the spinal cord is dependent on arterial pressure and collateral flow. Uh, cross clamp time should be minimized to decrease the risk of spinal cord ischemia ideally less than 30 minutes uh, which is usually typically well tolerated. Hypotensive anesthesia only required for short periods uh, or whether minute to minute control is all necessary such as uh, reducing blood pressure on cross clamping uh, by using NTG or SNP is preferred. Uh, the use of deliberate hypotension for the procedure to reduce blood loss and uh, allows the uh, lax iota for the anastomosis. In the setting of failing ventricle, inotropes may be needed to support cardiac output uh, while iota is cross clamped. Renal NIRS uh, second invasive art and the second, a second invasive arterial line in lower body will provide information regarding post clamp uh, arterial pressure. Teenagers and adults uh, with well developed collaterals may have a little change in uh, little change with application of iotic cross clamp. To reduce the risk of spinal cord ischemia, use cardiopulmonary bypass or left heart bypass in teenagers and older patients if uh, lower extremity mean uh, BP drops below uh, 45 or 50 during cross clamping. Minimize the adverse effects of iotic cross clamp. Uh, spinal cord perfusion uh, Maintain more uh, main arterial pressure uh, to be maintained more than 45 millimeters of mercury distal to the clamp. Uh, uh, in case uh, hypotension is there, surgeon uh, should adjust the proximal and distal uh, clamps uh, to maximize the uh, collateral blood flow. Ventilate uh, to achieve normal carbia in order to minimize the cerebral vasoconstriction, or we can provide hypercarbia to provide uh, cerebral, good cerebral perfusion. Mild hypothermia to reduce metabolic requirement of spinal cord ischemia uh, for spinal cord to avoid spinal cord ischemia. Monitoring spinal cord function uh, with the uh, SSEP and uh, MEPs. Uh, minimize the cross clamp time to 20 minutes. Release of cross clamp and management. Uh, uh, just before releasing the clamp, uh, stop the NTG or SNP to avoid the hypotension. Uh, and by having slightly patient hypervolemic and uh, provide gentle hyperventilation because the uh, reperfusion injury patient will have astrosis so providing hyperventilation will cause uh, metabolic uh, this respiratory alkalosis will slightly can uh, compensate with acidosis and uh, by removing the cross clamp slowly and acidosis may reduce when uh, circulation is restored if soda bicarb 
uh, given prophylactically prior to the release of plan. Post-operative post-anastomotic hypertension. Uh, Celi et al. first observed that post-operative hypertension was a common complication uh, that hypertension response was in two phases. He described a post-operative elevation of BP in first 24, 12 to 24 hours which would be then subside without treatment. Second delayed response uh, which followed uh, usually 48 hours or between, between 48 to 70 hours, 72 hours after surgery. Characteristic features which was diastolic hypertension. Abdominal symptoms were associated with the delayed rise uh, and are uh, diastolic uh, as a result of vasculitis and ischemia in small mesenteric arteries and arterioles. Post-operative considerations, uh, hypertension often persists during early post-operative period and can last for several weeks. Uh, dramatically elevated levels of norepinephrine to 750% of baseline above have been noted. Increased plasma renin activity has also been implicated. Several post-operative hypertension uh, should be aggressively managed. In addition to uh, concerns about stroke, hemorrhage and uh, other end organ dysfunction, hypertension after coagulation repair also has associated with mesenteric arteritis. Post-surgical pain likely exacerbates post-operative hypertension, so consider most, uh, multimodal analgesia. Dexmedetomidin has an opioid sparing effect and affords post-operative sedation and analgesia without respiratory depression. Continuous epidural infusion and uh, paravertebral blocks have been suggested. Post-operative care, aim for extubation uh, if possible, uh, as soon as possible, in, uh, if it is not a complex surgery. Control BP with NTG SNP infusion in immediate post-operative period. Beta blocker, AC inhibitor may be introduced post-operatively to control the blood pressure. Good analgesia to minimize hypertension. Assess lower limb function once muscle relaxants wear off. Post-operative pain, uh, the uh, use of uh, long-acting local anesthetics in intracostal block generally reduce the need of analgesics. Uh, the good analgesia, uh, with, uh, there, there will be less post-operative pulmonary complications. Uh, analgesia can be provided with um, intercostal, paravertebral, thoracic epidural or you can use the multimodal analgesia for better pain control. Complications, rebound hypertension, uh, this is thought to be due to increase in sympathetic activity and reflex vasospasm distal to the coactation varieta as well as uh, increase in renin activity. Post coactectomy syndrome, this is uh, due to increase in uh, blood flow and uh, pressure in mesenteric arteries post repair resulting in abdominal distension, pain, vomiting, decreased bowel sounds. This is minimized uh, by aggressive BP control and uh, delayed in enteral feeding until day 3 post-operative period. Spinal cord injury and uh, paraplegia, this occurs uh, secondary due to <coughs> aortic rash clamping. This can be minimized by reducing the duration of aortic rash clamping and relative hypothermia. Post-operative uh, hemorrhage. This uh, is due to injury to chest wall and uh, chest wall collateral seen in older children and adults. Chylothorax, this is due to uh, uh, thoracic duct injury. Hoarseness of voice, this is due to recurrent laryngeal nerve, <coughs> which loops around the uh, ductus arteriosus and ligamentum arteriosum. Diaphragmatic uh, paralysis, this is due to phrenic nerve injury. Thank you.